All right, guys, so the other day we did uh, an iCloud lesson for those that are on the Mac, little beginners. So today we're gonna to be doing the same thing, but we're doing it on an iPad, but just realize that this can be on an iPad or an iPhone or pretty much any of those devices. So iCloud, yeah, iCloud for, for iPhone, iPad. Confusing? Yeah, to some. So hopefully today we can, uh, we can, we can make this as, as clean as mud. All right, coming up. Okay, so I do recommend if you have a Mac to go watch the iCloud for Mac video because it's, again, we don't go in depth into it, nor are we going to go in depth on this one here, but hopefully it'll give you enough of a basic understanding to, to, to realize if these features are something that you want or how to use them, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so on an iPad, iCloud works, and this again is, I'm gonna say iPad, but it's iPad or iPhone, works a little differently, I think, than it kind of does on, let's say, a Mac, and just the way that it functions, as well as some of the fe physical features. So, primarily, if you look at iCloud, iCloud is designed to do two things. Number one is kind of back up the content that is on these devices to the cloud so that they're off this machine, just in case of, you know, they break or they're stolen or we lose them or whatever, that our data that is here is, is safe. And um, one of the things to firstly be aware of is that not all the content on your iPhone or iPad is going to be backed up into iCloud. And that's a big one to understand. You may have all the features of iCloud turned on, but you use a very specific app, and that app just doesn't use iCloud. A lot of apps may use their own cloud-style service. So, I'll use like games for instance. How many times have you played a game where it says, please log into this game with Google or log into it with your Facebook account? And some of us will do that, some of us will not, and that's personal preference up to you. But that means that that game or that application is using the Facebook service or using the Google service or whatever service that it's, it's kind of partnered with as their cloud service for backing up information. Example, what level you're on or what achievements you've got or how many points you've acquired. Um, that's not going to iCloud, right? So it can be really important for you and I to understand that iCloud doesn't back up everything. Now it does back up all the apps that you have, it just doesn't back up necessarily what's in those apps. Okay, and that, that's something to kind of just first off to, to kind of separate. So we're gonna go into iCloud here on, on our actual iPad. I'm gonna make sure first my do not disturb is on, which it is good so that we don't get a lot of binging and dinging all over the place. And we're gonna go into settings here. You're gonna see settings pop up, which is nice. And this is really simple. So right at the top, you're gonna to see your own name. So you'll see mine says my name here. And then underneath it, it says Apple ID, iCloud, Media and Purchase. And we're gonna really focus on the iCloud section of this. So we're just gonna tap on this. And of course it comes up here, right? This is it here. It has your name at the top. I've just moved mine up a little bit so that you don't see the personal information. Now, first off, up at the top section here, and this is really information in regards to your account. This is stuff that can be important. So you've got your home phone numbers, email. This is really important because let's say you change your phone number or you change your physical uh, email address. These are things that you may want to go in there and update so that the system realizes that. Passwords and security, payment and shipping, same kind of thing. This is where, let's say you have a credit card associate associated to your iCloud account to pay for uh, apps or to pay for additional storage, et cetera, et cetera. This is where you would make sure that you change that credit card information or change it from a credit card to, and you'll see I actually use PayPal. So change it to that as well as subscriptions. And this one is actually really important because you know Apple's, Apple's known to do this as well as other companies is that They'll be like, oh, so I see you bought a new iPad or I see you bought a new Mac computer or iPhone. So what we're gonna do is give you uh, three months of Apple Arcade or we're gonna give you uh, one full year of Apple TV. And you're like, cool. And then what happens is the month after that, you get charged, 
right? Because you are responsible for canceling that subscription. And this is where you would come in and you'd see that subscription area right here. And it'll take you into a screen that shows all your subscriptions. And all you have to do is you can click on them and you can actually say, you know, about, you can co come in here. I've actually turned this one off, but I could actually say, I don't want it anymore. So let's say Crave, for instance, I like Crave, but see, cancel subscription. I don't want it anymore. Get rid of it. So a lot of cool little things you can go in there, but this is a good area to understand because, you know, a lot of us sign up for subscriptions nowadays and we need to know how to unsubscribe. We're going to go into iCloud in a second. First thing that I want you guys to see is down here. We'll scroll down a little bit and you're going to see a list here. And this is a list of uh, Apple products, Windows products, any kind of products that has the ability to log in with an Apple ID. So it could be, like I said, Windows computers, iPhones, iPads, Android tablets. It could be smart TVs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You'll see here iPad, Windows computer, Apple Watch, another Apple Watch, my iMac, iPhone, you know, a laptop, my living room Apple TV, my HomePod, MacBook Pro. You want to come through here, especially if you're someone that has. Uh, owned an Apple device or a Windows computer and has, maybe you don't use it anymore, or you may have sold it or it's broken and it's not repairable, et cetera, et cetera. You want to make sure it's not listed here. So if it is listed here and you're like, I don't have that anymore, or even worse, that you notice a device that you've never used, you're like, what is that? Then you want to click on it and make sure that you'll see here, remove from your account and it'll get rid of it. Now, if you do see a device in here that you're like, um, what is that? and you make sure that you really have no idea what that is, it may be a good time to change your Apple ID password. Not the Apple ID, don't do that, but your Apple ID password. Maybe something to look into. Now, back up here, we will see, of course, the iCloud. This is where we're gonna go in. Right at the top, you see iCloud, and this is storage. So this is gonna show you how much storage is used in your iCloud. And this is actually a really important one, especially for those of us that may have the small, like the free five gigs. Five gigs isn't a lot, so it's very easy for you and I to go through that. This, though, is gonna tell us how much of our storage is being used and how much uh, is being used based on what it is. So you'll see on mine, photos is the big one, right? Followed by docs, followed by others. And then I have a gray area that says family. Now, because I have family sharing enabled on my, I my iPhone, my iPad, my Mac, um, what happens is my two terabytes of actual iCloud storage gets shared amongst me and my wife and my daughter, which is great. We only have to pay for what kind of one big service and we all get to share it, but I get to see how much space they're using. So you can also go into this manage storage, of course, if you need more or if you've bought more and realize that you don't need that much. You actually can see here, you'll see change storage plan. So that's kind of nice, but you'll also see a list of all the apps based on largest to smallest, uh, how much they're using right now. So you may come in here and be like, oh, look, GarageBand's using 650 megs. I don't, I don't need that. So you can go in and maybe realize that you can delete some stuff out of GarageBand, et cetera, et cetera. But realize that if you're deleting it here, it's deleting everywhere. Because that's the other thing I want you guys to realize. We talked about the, the primary kind of reason for us using iCloud was the fact that it kind of backs up everything, which is nice. Number two, and probably the biggest one, especially for those of us that have multiple Apple devices, is that it synchronizes. So we want to make sure that if we uh, delete something from here to free up space on our iPad, well, that it's, it's actually deleting on your Mac as well, or your iPhone as well. So they, they synchronize because it's, it's an all or nothing scenario, right? If you have those features turned on, I have, photos turned on here and on my Mac. If I delete, they delete. If I add, they add. It's, it's, that's how, that's what sync means. So kind of, kind of understand that, right? That's where some people are like, I don't, I don't want it on, or I do want it on. There's pluses and negatives without question of it, right? The pluses is of course that it's, it's super simple to manage. It's, there's no, I wonder which device I put that information on. If I put it here, it's on all of them. If I delete it from here, it's on all of them, or it's removed from all of them. But then comes the other side, which is I want it here, but I don't want it here. So you kind of have to kind of think about it, but you do have to realize too, that there's a way on the outside of iCloud to use certain features too. And that's not something we're going to go into today, but that you can use that. Just realize kind of 
it's an all or nothing kind of scenario with iCloud if you have the features turned on. Scrolling down here, now photos, uh, we'll go into photos on iCloud in a different video because it's a little deeper and I could spend easily 15, 20 minutes on it. So we'll talk about that later. Um, mail, contacts, calendars, reminders, notes. These are all apps, you'll see at the top, apps using iCloud. So this is a really good area for you and I to go into and you can scroll all the way down here. You'll see the top section where it kind of has a, has a little space between them. These are Apple apps, right? So these are apps all from Apple, if you want them on or off. Scroll down here, it's the actual iCloud drive. Scroll down a little bit more, um, you're gonna see apps that weren't by default on here, but have been downloaded that are Apple apps. And last but not least, third-party apps that you've downloaded from the App Store that can use it. So this part here is really important actually, because this is where, when we talked about that question at the beginning, are all apps using iCloud? And I said, no. This is where you can kind of come in and see what apps you have on your device that, first off I'll say, can use iCloud. So every one of these here can use iCloud. And, and on your device is gonna be different. It all depends on which apps you've actually downloaded. This toggle switch says if they are using iCloud or not. Because if I just hit that to no, this isn't using iCloud anymore, which means it's storing inside its own app, and that's it. So if I were to delete that app, or the iPad were to crash, uh, that app and all of its contents would go away. If I re-downloaded the app from the App Store, I'd get the app back, but I'd start at ground zero again. So kind of be aware, right? These, or these, can use it. If this is on, they are using it. So when you're about to format this or you're supposed to get rid of it or clean it up or whatever, this is kind of an important area for us to kind of look at and be like, I wonder if it's actually using it. So that's really good. You'll notice I have them all turned on. I like iCloud a lot. I use it a lot. And because of that, I want it all on. Um, the big one in here, the big one in here I find, and this is very different from the Mac, is this guy right here, iCloud Backup, okay? So two in here that are important, iCloud Backup is number one. So if we tap on that, of course, this is something you and I, we should have turned on, especially if we have the storage for it, um, because it's just, you know, if you have to, you can back up by plugging this into a computer, but the issue is, is we all forget. If this is turned on, what happens is your iPad will back up whenever it's sleeping, plugged in and connected to the internet. So I can come in here and you'll actually see, because my iPad was ran out of power, it didn't back up in the last while, but I haven't done anything with it, so not a big issue. Uh, but last successful backup, December 30th. This is a really important area for us to come into on occasion, because we want to verify that this has actually backed up. I've looked at people's iPads where I'm like, do you back up your iPad? And they're like, yeah. So we go in there and this, it's been turned on, they did turn it on, but the last backup was like six months ago. Why did it only back up six months ago? Well, it could have been anything. It could have been a password issue. It could have been the fact that they ran out of cloud storage and it just stopped. We wanna come in here and do that because if I hit this backup now, you'll actually see that it look at everything that's changed and start to do its backup. Once it's finished, it'll complete and say, the last completed backup happened and it'll have this date and time on it. Really, really important for us to validate that because if not, you're trusting something that could fail, right? So come in here, especially if it's a device you use a lot or if you put information on here that's really important to you, uh, come in here every once in a while, just check to see if that iCloud backup has finished. Now the nice thing about the actual iPad and iPhone, is that they are really a fairly complete backup. They really are designed to backup this thing in its entirety. Again, watch inside applications. Not all apps, their content is gonna be backed up. But all your apps, all your photos, all your contacts, all your calendars, all, all that kind of stuff, if you have all those turned on, you should be, you should be good to go, which is really nice. Um, I'm gonna leave this video here. It's a little shorter than the Mac version, but I find the Mac has a little bit more detail inside it. And uh, I'm gonna uh, let you guys uh, meander this in your thoughts, I guess, ponder it. Uh, if you have any questions on it, we can do a follow-up video for sure. 
and we'll, we'll go into it a little deeper if that's something you guys are looking at. But for now, hopefully you guys get a good idea of what this is, kind of how it works. And one, oh yeah, one more thing. I, I almost forgot one more thing. I just wanted to talk about these ones. See these ones here? Pages, Keynote, Movies, iMovie. These ones are nice too, because if you have like a Mac or an iPhone and you have this Pages, let's say Pages, because a lot of us use Pages, it's a word processor. Um, if I type a document, there's no save button anywhere. There's no save it here, or save it wherever, right? It just, once you close the doc, it just, it just magically saves it. That's the same with Keynote and iMovie and all that. So the bonus of having these on is that they actually save into the iCloud drive under a folder called Pages, which means that it's completely accessible on your iPhone and your iPad and your Mac computer. And a Windows computer, actually, if you use iCloud.com, iCloud which is cool, and it's mindless, right? Again, this is saying, do you want it to save cloud-based or do you want it to save here? I want it here so that I can access it on, on all my stuff, but that's only a decision you can answer. All right, guys, I'm gonna leave you there. Uh, again, like, comment, share, subscribe. Hit that li little bell down there because it's it's good. It's good for all of us. And uh, leave comments down below, like I said, if you have any further questions in regards to um, iCloud. And uh, maybe we'll do a part two. All right, guys. I will see you next video. Later, my friends.